Very few unboxings are as exciting as this one. Let's do it. What is up everyone? How you doing today? My name is David Dupranco from davidupran.co. Today I'm recording at an angle just so I can get everything in frame for you guys. And it is already uh, like 6, 10-ish. Yeah, my MacBook Pro got here a little late. It was gonna get here on Monday. So I was like, okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. I can record it on Tuesday. And then uh, Tuesday came and went, no MacBook Pro. Uh, but today is Wednesday. It eventually arrived around like 5.30, which was perfect timing because it arrived right before my Chick-fil-A got here. Not that you need to know that, but I'm just saying like, the timing is amazing. So with that said, I'm not streaming live tonight, Wednesday, not that it matters by the time you see this, because my time is going to be dedicated to this, guys. My first MacBook Pro since the 2015 model. Yes, it's been six years, guys. That's how long it's been. Now, I've had plenty of experience with other Apple products, such as last year's iMac refresh. Love it. Yes, I will be selling it to offset the cost of this. This wasn't cheap. This is like $2,800. I'm not flexing, trust me. I'm not made of money. I'm not like that. Um, but I'm just saying, things are expensive. And if you can sell things to offset the costs, uh, then, then why not? Because guys, this MacBook Pro is essentially my new desktop. Yes, this is a notebook primarily, but for me, it's gonna be 70% desktop, 30% uh, notebook. Well, because I'm lucky enough to have my own office. I love this office and I love working at a desk, but there are those moments where I enjoy editing on my couch. I love editing on my couch with a Plex movie in the background, watching YouTube or whatever. It's just a very, very nice feeling. And I even love editing in bed. TMI, I don't care, I don't care. Uh, but I do edit all the time, guys, on this. My mid-2017 12-inch MacBook. I absolutely love this computer. I'm waiting until the screen turns on so you can't see all the ungodly smudges. It's very slow to turn on sometimes after sleeping. There you go. I love this notebook, guys. I know a lot of people are not a fan of the 2017 MacBook keyboard, but I love this. Like, this is honestly most likely my favorite keyboard design of all time in a notebook. That's how much I love it. I love how thin it is. I love how reactive it is. And I love the clickiness. Hear that? It's not smushy at all. So yeah, in other words, I'm not getting rid of this notebook. This is still my bedtime uh, MacBook for just web browsing, light photoshopping, all that stuff. But this is obviously my new primary computer. And by the way, guys, if this is your first time here, I talk a lot. Anybody can unbox a product. Just anybody. My cat can unbox a product. What makes my videos unique is, I believe anyway, is that I love to talk and I love to give you guys my, you know, behind the scenes approach, my way of thinking of why I buy certain products. So uh, yeah, I'm selling the iMac. I'll be keeping the MacBook. I have my iPad Pro over here. Love this iPad so much with the Magic Keyboard. Absolutely incredible. And yes, I will be making videos on that in the near future. Okay, but you're probably wondering and then I promise I'll get to the actual unboxing. Hey, you always have the power to fast forward. I don't want to see any complaints in the comments, all right? Be cool, be cool. Okay, but seriously, I will be using this as a desktop powered by this from Belkin. I bought this myself. This is the Belkin, don't see the model anywhere. Here it is, it's the INC002. It's a USB-C dock. Essentially, you plug the main USB-C right there in the front. And of course, you have USB-3 on the front as well and the three and a half millimeter audio outs, which I probably will never use. But on the back, this is where the real magic happens. We have two HDMIs out. So in other words, while the MacBook Pro will be acting as a desktop in clamshell mode, meaning I'll shut it, it'll be closed at all times and sitting in this, a vertical laptop stand. And I'll be talking about this in future videos. Maybe I'll unbox this today, I don't know. Um, but anyway, this is gonna be driving both displays and any USB devices I have. Now, unfortunately, the only thing this doesn't have is a SD card slot. That would have been really nice, uh, but it's not a big deal because I can either put an SD card adapter in one of the USB ports, likely the front one, so I can easily access it, or I'll just insert the SD card directly into the MacBook Pro itself. So guys, that means when I don't want to work at my desk, I simply unplug one cable, one cable, because this is actually powering the MacBook Pro. How cool is that? So essentially, this is a notebook slash desktop hybrid. And yes, my voice still is not 100% back, but it's getting there. Okay, enough rambling. Let's unbox the MacBook Pro because I am very, very excited about this. This is going to dramatically increase my workflow. 
Currently, for any video edits that I want to do for like my gaming channel, for example, last night I did a video project. It was about like 55 minutes, 1080p, 60 frames per second. That 55 minute project, no joke, took maybe two to three hours to export on this little baby MacBook. And I love this MacBook. I love the size. I love everything about it. It's just incredible. But it's not built for speed. It's not built for power. It's meant to be for light usage, like web browsing and email and all that stuff and some video editing here and there. Um, so if I do want to video edits in bed now, this is my primary go-to computer. I can see myself getting a MacBook Air at some point, maybe. Oh, and by the way, the only reason I went with the MacBook Pro, and guys, don't get me wrong, I'm looking so, so forward to using this, is because we did not get a Mac Mini last week. I was so sure that we would get a new Mac Mini powered by M1 Pro or even an M1 Max Mac Mini, but we didn't get that. So I figured, well, why not get best of both worlds, a desktop and a notebook. So here we are, guys. I got the 14-inch Space Gray, 32 gigs of RAM, unified RAM at that. So keep in mind, even if you go with 16 gigs of unified memory, you're still getting an insane beast. Yeah, I'm just gonna say this. I'm a heavy PC user when it comes to gaming, but you just cannot compare RAM usage on a Mac to RAM usage on a PC. These architectures use memory very, very differently. No, Mal, you're saying down there. What's up, baby? What's up, dude? So uh, yeah, 14 inch, space gray, 32 gigs of memory, which is insane for what I need, and one terabyte of SSD storage. Man, I am really building up the hype, aren't I? Here we go, guys. <gasps> My first MacBook Pro in six years. Okay, put this over here. As always, incredible packaging by Apple. You have a simple pull-out tab. Holy shit. This thing is heavy. Like, it is so heavy. Wow. You know what, though? Okay, first of all, it's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. I'm just surprised at how heavy this is. I mean, it's not like I'm gonna be carrying it around a lot with me, but damn, this is significantly heavier than I believe even my 2015 MacBook Pro. I would, I would compare them, and I'm sure there's stats all over the place online, but I'm just not gonna do that. But yo, first impressions for someone who's so used to is 11 inch, oh, I'm sorry, 12 inch, 2017 MacBook and 2021 12.9 uh, inch iPad Pro being so light. This thing is surprisingly heavy. And guys, I gotta say, I'm glad, and no offense to Johnny Ive, I know you're not watching, I respect the hell out of your designs, but ever since Johnny Ive left, have you noticed Apple no longer brags about the, the lightest, the thinnest iPhone yet, the thinnest MacBook Pro yet? You guys still with me? My Canon just stopped recording as I'm recording in 1080p, 60 frames per second. God forbid I push this camera to its limits. Anyway, I'm gonna make a rough jump cut there. Basically, I'm saying Apple's products are beefier and they're giving us better battery life and more ports. Yeah, I'm just glad they're trading certain things off to give us more, more features and more usability. Okay, continuing the unboxing. Hopefully the camera doesn't stop. Again, and, and if it does, then I'll give the camera a break. Oh, poor little Canon ADD, you can't handle this. Suck it up. Designed by Apple in California. You should get Apple stickers. Oh my, they're black. They're black. Have I ever gotten black Apple stickers? Maybe I did with my 2013 Mac Pro. And I owe you guys for that. Seriously, thank you so much. Huh, very, very, Interesting, black Apple stickers. You just don't see that very often, guys. Love it. All right, so I'm gonna put them right back in there. We get a fairly large-sized power brick. Heavy, too. Very nice. And of course, you have the Apple branding. And as always, it flips out. And most importantly, for my international peeps out there, if you go traveling, you can take out the adapter. You can take out the adapter, it's tight and put in like a European adapter or whatever, or US if you come to the US. So, very cool. That's always been a nice feature. But uh, yeah, me being me, I don't, I don't have much of a life, so I don't really get out of the house too much, or at least out of the country for that matter. Oh, and you do have USB-C right there. Speaking of USB-C, check this out. I heard about this online, but this is my first time seeing it in person. Oh my God. They put so much care into their freaking cable. <laughs> it's incredible. I don't need that. 
So the cable, the MagSafe to USB-C cable is actually braided. Like that's a beautiful quality cable, guys. Look at that. That is so well done. Apple, good jobs. Honestly, guys, they don't have to do this, but they did it anyway. Like they don't, they don't have to put that kind of attention to detail into a freaking power cable, but they did because it's Apple. Apple's amazing. All right, guys, here we go. Finally, the granddaddy of the show. 2021 M1 Pro. Didn't go for M1 Max. M1 Pro, honestly, is overkill for my work as it is. So this thing is just going to absolutely demolish you, iMac. No offense. I love my iMac, but this being my first M1 Mac ever, I can't even imagine the kind of performance and export times I'm going to get out of Final Cut Pro 10 with this thing. So here we go. Let's take off the paper. Look, check it out guys. It even says MacBook Pro on the bottom. How cool is that? What a nice touch. And it's etched in there. Like it's etched in there. It's not just letters stamped. It's actually etched into the freaking design. God, you just don't see this kind of attention to detail from other companies. Wow. <laughs> I'm getting like titanium PowerBook vibes, which I've never owned, but I've seen videos and pictures of. This is absolutely freaking beautiful. My God, look at this. It, it's gorgeous, and I never use the word gorgeous. All right, so we have the MagSafe connector over there. Yes, MagSafe is back, guys. Boom, look at that, you just magnetically connect it, and God forbid if someone like Maui runs into it, boom, it comes right off, power cable falls, but the MacBook Pro does not. That is very cool. I've always enjoyed that about my 2015 MacBook Pro. But honestly, I'm not hating. Okay, here we go. I'm not hating. Let me preface that appropriately. I like MagSafe. I do. But I'm not one of the people who, uh, I mean, yeah, I missed it. But I, I didn't cry about it. You know, I don't, I don't mind charging via USB-C. Like, that's not a big deal to me at all. But the fact that I do have that magnetic charging... And that quick release, that's really cool. Like, that's, that's very cool. And of course, if you don't want to charge via MagSafe, like if you're traveling and you have a USB-C cable on you, you can plug into the one of the three USB-C connections on here, which is really neat. And of course, we have three and a half millimeter out. I shouldn't say, and of course, but this, is, this, this being a pro product, uh, it's typically gonna have a headphone jack. HDMI out, which, I don't know. I wish Apple would have, not given us HDMI out and instead given us another USB-C port. It's not a huge deal, but I, I guess there are people out there who do want HDMI out. Me personally, it's, I'm not, I don't know, it's not that important to me. But hey, I mean, you never know. Maybe I'll be out one day at my parents' house or at some hotel in Seaside Heights or, under, I don't know, New York City if I ever go back there. It's been a while and I need to output my MacBook Pro. Well, then yeah, it's there. But hey, as I like to say, don't complain about the features that are there. Complain about the features that are not there. And guys, I will say one big feature that's making a comeback, and I use this religiously on my iMac and my other MacBook Pro when I actually use it daily, SD card slot. This right here is a godsend. This right here is something we should have never lost to begin with. I use SD cards every single week. For instance, when I import my GoPro footage, my GoPros are on here somewhere. I put the micro SD card into this adapter, plug it into the SD card slot, and I import it that way. So for example, check it out. Boom. Wow, it's even got a nice click to it. Okay, so let's boot up the MacBook Pro. This isn't gonna be a walkthrough process showing you how to set up a new Mac, because I think, I think everyone's seen the Mac setup process, but I am interested to see if I recognize Liquid Retina XDR display right away, because on the iPad Pro, it absolutely bros my bros. <laughs> hey, what's up, bro? It blows my freaking mind. Seriously, iPad Pro, the newest one, has the best display I've ever seen on a portable device. And it's ProMotion, don't forget, like both of these are ProMotion, iPad and MacBook Pro, meaning 120 hertz refresh rate. I've never seen 120 hertz on a notebook before, at least for me, like my, my own personal and professional usage. So here we go. The first open of the M1 MacBook Pro. Pro, <clears throat> my, oh my God, it boots right away. That is so cool. And we get a little protective sleeve. 
take that off carefully. Oh my God. <laughs> oh baby, you're mine. You are mine. Wow, dude, that's a fast, fast Buddha for a startup. Hello, you see that? That is so sweet. So I've never owned a Mac before with built-in Touch ID. I use Touch ID all the time on my iPad mini, like daily, I love Touch ID on my iPad mini. I don't miss it on my iPhone. Seriously, I don't miss Touch ID on my iPhone at all. I think all the hype is just that, hype. I mean, do we really miss Touch ID that much? Me personally, I don't. I'd rather do Face ID, it's just so much more reliable and more secure, by the way. And by the way, there's the notch. I'll talk about that in future videos. I don't mind it personally. I think, I think it makes it look rather unique. And guys, I swear to God, you will see other companies copying Apple. You will see them. You will see notebooks within the next two years with notches. I'm calling it now, I guarantee you. So yeah, there, there is no Face ID. It's kind of a bummer, I was hoping for a Face ID. But hey, I mean, if Apple could have pulled it off, then they would have. So I can only assume we'll get that in the future. But for now, to have Touch ID built into my keyboard, that's a first for me. So that for me is enough. So let me, let me just type on the Mac, the uh, keyboard first. Let me mute it. I don't think you can even mute it yet now. Wow, typing does feel really nice. It's a tad squishier than my 2017 12 inch MacBook. Honestly, hold on, hold on. It feels kind of like my iPad Pro keyboard, uh, but not as clicky. Actually, it's really close. It's very close. So if you use the smart keyboard, for the new iPad Pro. That should give you a good idea of the oui, keyboard design. Hush, oh, oh, oui. So, sorry, he's speaking French to me. I, I, I don't, no comprende French. I know that's Spanish, I'm not an idiot. Sorry guys, I'm a little hyper right now. I'm very, very excited. Not not your typical professional tech reviewer. Let me give you fancy as we roll. No, this is me, this is the real me. I'm as geeky and nerdy as it gets when it comes to unboxing a new product. And I don't give a shit, I love it. So anyway, the black keyboard is very interesting. Much like the iPad Pro Magic Keyboard, the keys are kind of sitting against like a black shell. I forget what other people called it, but it looks like it's on like a black shell. So uh, anyway, Retina looks the same. I think I'm seeing pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm seeing. I'm seeing promotion. To use English as the main language, press the return key. I'm just, I'm just so used to seeing it on the iPad Pro, so I'm just so used to seeing it in general, you know, from my iPhone to my iPad and now my MacBook Pro. Uh, it's so smooth. I love 120 hertz. Now, I'm not going to see XDR right now, you know, because I'm just, I'm just looking at basic text and basic colors, like his gradient in the background. Uh, but obviously, the display is clean as hell, very, uh, very austere, the office. Anyway guys, that's all you're getting from me. And I gotta say the notch looks kinda cool. I know, trust me, I realize why people don't like the notch. Personally, I think it looks kinda neat. So is it gonna get in the way of my work? Probably not, I just think people like the bitch. There, I said it. People look for things to complain about, not appreciate. It's like, this is a beautiful freaking notebook and it's very tight. The hinge is incredibly tight. Obviously very thin bezels. So I think when you shut the display, yeah, you're either gonna wanna push it from the back or grab it from the middle where, where the camera is without touching the lens. And guys, there you have it. There is my 2021 MacBook Pro unboxing. I promise the more I explore this, obviously I'll see some XDR content because as I'll tell you, when the lights go out in my room and I'm using my iPad Pro in the dark and those blacks pop up, some of the richest blacks I've ever seen on a display ever seen. It's borderline OLED. And guys, I'm not saying all this as an Apple fanboy. I'm just greatly appreciative of incredible technology. Uh, but the fact that it's Apple, not gonna lie, makes it a little better in my ass because I'm an Apple fanboy. You know, I'm damn proud of it. I love Apple. I give them a lot of money every year. I just really, really enjoy their products. But uh, anyway, with that said, if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe because I'm the kind of person who doesn't obsess over like benchmarks or whatever, but I'm the kind of guy who will give you some real world first impressions uh, based on my usage from Photoshop to video editing in Final Cut Pro 10 uh, to even just basic things like watching movies and listening to music. Apparently the speakers on here are really good. So in other words, all I'm saying is stay tuned. I will be talking about this 
plenty in future videos, including some actual MacBook Pro videos. But for me, I'm mostly going to focus on at least in the first week or two, just talking about the pros and cons of this product in my vlogs. Yes, I'm primarily a vlogger, you know? I'm a tech reviewer, but I'm a tech vlogger. I like to call myself a tech vlogger. So, um, you guys have it. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are amazing. You made this possible. Seriously, you made this possible. I've been on YouTube for 15 plus years, and honestly, 15 years ago, I couldn't, I couldn't afford stuff like this. YouTube has quite literally changed my life, and I have you to thank for that. So thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Take care, stay safe out there, and please don't forget to hug your loved ones. Tomorrow's ever promised. I'll see you soon. Peace.